the top 25 and now this is only a select few and um, we're going to find out what reasons. I've got Glenn here with me who's nice too, Tan Shady. Yes. Can, yep. yes. He's um, one of the top 25s here at the Tri-5 Nationals. Glenn, how's it going? It's going good. Besides the heat and the humidity, it's going good. That's right. Well, at least it's the sunny, the sky is blue and it's not raining. That's right. Some shows it's been raining because yeah. that is shining in the sun. Yeah. It looks immaculate. It looks absolutely beautiful. Um, obviously it is. It's in the top 25. Tell us a little bit about the car. So the car, the car came out of Wisconsin. It was a driver, had 75,000 miles. And we picked it up in Wisconsin. We live in Alberta, Canada. Took it back to Alberta. We really started, that was in 20, 2008. We really started working on it in 2010. And we bought a frame from Art Morrison. We started tearing the car apart. Yes, sir. And then it just kind of morphed into what it is right now. So you tore it all apart? Yeah, tore it all apart. And then what happens when we tore it all apart, the chassis was such a beautiful chassis with the original V8 engine. We left it everything together and we sold it to a gentleman who was doing a restore okay. on a 55 Chev and he basically just plopped it on and then all we had left was the upper shell. Right. We took it to um, Oregon. We had it acid dipped. Acid dipped? Acid dipped. Okay. I it, don't know what that means. What is the, what is, what's so acid, acid dipped, they put it in a big vat and they basically peel off everything except metal and any rust, it deteriorates the rust so when you pull it out they rinse it and then they put a anti-rust formula on it when you see the car you can tell where every little rust kit is and then you can repair it it is the easiest way to there's only two places it in all it sounds the quickest and also most expensive for some no actually no? it is not it's um compared to sanding it back and yeah and you'll never get to all the nooks and crannies and sandblasting actually changes the metal a little bit okay and acid dipping doesn't change anything it just eats away paint grime it does not eat away undercoating because okay. i had to manually take that all off right <laughs> and then any rust so there was areas that we thought we were good yeah all of a sudden little pinholes showed up so then you know if you would have just sandblasted you would have never saw that so then we knew exactly where we had to repair because it's liquid it. i'm guessing it's, it's, it's liquid, liquid it is it basically acid yeah, right. it's like a hot acid bath right and they, yeah. it's seven different things they put it in over about a seven day period and did they do that when um the shell was in pieces like the doors yeah the so the doors were hung separately yeah the hood in the trunk was yeah and then the whole body so if you know if you go to a uh, factory and they build cars and they run and they run into the primer yes and then out of the primer yeah. all the primer gets into every little nook and cranny yeah. well that's the big about acid dipping it gets okay. in everywhere cleans it up yeah and then you have a we basically had a shine, shiny yeah. it was like a, a bluish color metal because that was the protection they put on it but you knew exactly what you had to work on and and that's what helps it doesn't it especially with the paint yeah to get it to have a really smooth finish yep. a shiny finish you know what you're starting with you know what you're starting with okay so why the 210 first uh, so my first car was a Chevy 210 just like okay, this. Okay, come on, get you to stand in front I of it. I bought it. I bought it when I was 15 years old, and I built it until I was 18, and I raced it. And then all of a sudden, someone said you should show it. So we started showing it. We won a few World of Wheels, and this was a long time. This was in the 70s. Yeah. And then the differences that cut there was uh, 10 years of marriage and a divorce. Yep. It went 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 away. And then my new wife, Shelly, she decided we were we were talking about that we had done a lower truck. We did a beautiful lower truck and she said, you should redo a 55 Chef. And she found it on eBay and she said, you should bid on this. And then we started bidding on it. We got it in Wisconsin and then we, that's what this became. She's a good wife. Good wife, you know the Thank biggest. Thank you, Shelley. The big, the big thing was. <laughs> if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be looking at this. <laughs> <laughs> the big thing for me was, she, her support was always, do it the way you want to do it. Don't yeah. cut corners. Yeah. Because you get to the point where it's starting to morph a little bit farther than what you think it should. Mm -hmm. And she kept saying, well, you can't back up. Just keep going forward. Yeah. And we intended just to do good guy shows, but we showed this for over three years in the whole circuit in the world of wheels and the grand national sacramento and we did really really well 
You have. I saw some of the um, stickers there as well. You have done really well. And you've told me about the chassis and the body and why it looks the color and the shine it has today. But there's more, Glenn. What's happening under the engine that sets this apart from the others? Well, so this is a Pat Meese Yellowbrock. It was an experimental engine at one time. Okay, it's a what block, sorry? So it's a 555. Mm -hmm. It's based on a GM block. It's a dart block. A dart? It, a dart. Dart okay. does the casting. Okay. So all the racers usually have dart blocks. Okay. So it's based on a, a Chevy big block. And it was a it was a joint venture between Vic Edelbrock and Pat Musi. And we knew about it and we met with Troy Hooker, Edelbrock performance manager. And we talked, are you guys gonna build it? When I knew this engine was being built. And I loved the idea of having the triple nickel, because it's a fifty-five. What's the and triple it's a nickel? Five fifty-five cubic inches. Okay. So on the back it's got the five fifty-five cubic inches. Oh yeah. So to me it fit. And I had a small block before and I wanted a big block. It's and definitely it, a big block. And yeah. what made it experimental? So it was just, they were trying it out, different combinations, more, mostly the ProFlow EX XT. So it's like a high rise fuel injected. That was a big thing when they first came out with us. Mm -hmm. And then Pat Musi builds racing engines and he built the whole bottom end for it. Oh, wow. Okay. So we worked out a deal yep. and they shipped one to Canada for us to put it in a show car because they wanted to get the name up there. So that's kind of how this came up. The funnest thing is that it sounds like a dragster, which people are always shocked. Like last night we did the awards and I lit her up going down the track and I had more people say, I had no idea that car would do that. So you kind of surprise people because it has 720 horse and 698 torque. Okay, wow. And it's got over 600 to the rear wheel. So it's... It's fast. It's fast. You really were a dragster racer, weren't you? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's got a lot of power. Um, can you educate me, Glenn? What what's going on so here? Just the air intake. So that's it's, just the air intake. It's a 92 millimeter air intake, mm -hmm. and you got to get a lot of air into this engine, so it's kind of flows through the high rise yeah. and into the cylinders, and then they're injected as they get into the cylinders. So we need a lot of air, so we came up with a snorkel. Yes, and then the air um, I haven't the seen side. these on the side before. And then you get cold air. Okay. So when this is closed. You know, the air goes through there, the warm air goes in the engine bay, and you get cold air coming up through the through the filters. Let's close that hood and give everyone a good look of what the car looks like. <laughs> Can we close the hood? Sure. So that's where you see the gold, the inlay of the gold pearls in the tape. The sun lifts it. The sun lifts the pearl up from underneath, doesn't it? Yeah, it hits it and then brings it. So that's where you get all the highlights on the curves. Absolutely beautiful. Well, you can open that up because I know everybody wants to see the big block under there and we'll go inside the interiors. Very luxurious. Yes. inside it <laughs> it's, uh, there's a lot of work to the interior i can see this is everything is custom everything's custom oh wow very nice So if you look like everything like so even all these these are all made out of bronze key stock they're hand shaped and formed these are bucks they were poured so they melted bronze poured them in a mold and then hand shaped all of them and there's so the idea of these is my grandparents long long time ago had an old art deco radio okay and the speaker on the art deco radio looked just like <laughs> So that's ah, what the speaker looked like. Right. It's this. It's a little bit wider. Yeah. So the concept started with that, and then it's it the similar kind of design to that. Okay. I love how even the trunk is not just the trunk. No, and then everything's <laughs> just kind of hidden in behind. Look at that. 
off. So the battery's Wait, on a the, tray. That's that, the battery, okay. Yeah, it'll actually move out and then all my switches and the amp and everything is on a board and behind the seat. So I can take this, this out and then get at it. Wow. And did you have an idea that this is exactly how you wanted to do it? How did... In my head, I knew yeah. what I wanted for colors. I had to do a lot of mixing in different uh, trial and error. Mm -hmm. But I knew what I wanted. And I knew I was in love with the 55 as a kid. Yep. And I wanted to redo it again. You know, like even simple things that people don't realize is, is uh, this typically is right here. Then your keyhole, then this plate is usually right here. Okay. But it never looks symmetrical. So I body worked it and brought it down to here, drilled a hole where you can get at the key. And then we took the plate and we inlaid it right into the bumper. So this is the original bumper, this yeah. metal piece. We put a plate in behind. So nothing it. sticks, like it's it's then, that small fine details. There's a and then people don't know that. Like they All they know is okay, it looks really nice. What's yeah. making it look so nice? Yeah. There's a few body mods that people don't know and you know even the bumpers there's no bumper bolts there's no nothing there's a backup camera that you don't see it's got gps it's got everything wow you've really so, brought it to the modern day yet the, when you see it it takes you it's back got power lock gps it's <laughs> got the whole that's cool because when you sit in it you're sitting down in modern day but then your memories take you back to yeah yeah for, for me it was always somebody always said why a lot of people, like you look at cars, they always take the hood bird, mm -hmm. the little plane on the front. Yep. They take that off. But when I was growing up, that was the one thing that I always remember driving was looking at that hood bird. Yeah. So definitely have to put one of those back on. So I, I love the car. I love the trim. Yep. So I kept the trim. A lot of people take all the trim off. Yes. And to me, that's what made the car. So I always made sure that I put the same trim back on it. Now this is a 56. What? It's a 56? 55. 55. 55. Yeah. 55. Sorry, that's why I thought. That's why it's called a replacement. So when we were showing in the shows in the States, it was called a replacement because it had replaced my original car. It had replaced the original car. In case people want to see the details. Well, this is fantastic. So when are you going to find out what happens now that you've been selected in the top 25? So the judges, so I'm an ISCA judge. When I showed so much, I got to know the judges. They asked me to become an ISCA judge. So what does ISCA stand for? So it's International Show Car Association. Okay. And they do all the world of wheels and power ramas. It's one individual who owns the show car association. Mm -hmm. And I did so much indoor showing, I decided I don't want to it's a lot of work yeah a lot of effort so when we quit we enjoy the people and we got to know so many good people judges yep. organizers so now my wife does all the registrations and a lot of the world wheels i do the showing in canada not so much in the states so i do the judging and to me it's it was now we just drive the car now you just drive the car yeah. and enjoy it and enjoy it this is amazing. It's your driver. It is. This is yeah, we have about normally these cars are not drivers. Yeah, not. <laughs> there's about seven thousand miles on it. Even when we we did the Grand Nationals, yeah, and we were competing against brand new builds. Yeah, and we already had five thousand miles on our build, and we still did okay. You know, we got a second. But what nice. happened? What got me on the Grand Nationals was we got an interior work overall for the whole show. So we had the best interior, yeah, which I can, was I can really cool. And it's all leather. Yeah, it's, it's all. It's two-tone leather. There's like a everywhere. Over nine thousand in leather. I'm not surprised. I mean, the cows are not going to be happy, sir. But I mean, it looks good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the good thing a judge always told me once: a car show is like a drag race. It all depends on yeah. what cars show up, and that's what dictates if you're going to win or lose. So there's always that one car that's just that a little bit better than yours. A little bit better. It's a little bit better. Oh, we're well. proud of it. It does really well. I bet it does. Um, so you've already raced it today? No, we yesterday at the. A lot of people were joking because we did the awards. Yep. And then you were allowed to do whatever you want after the awards, and then that's when I. Oh, I would have I kind of spun that. through three gears, and she hooked up, and yep. by the time we hit the end of the track, we were at 130. So it was nice. It was moving, and it. The great thing for me was people came to me, and they were so surprised 
by looking at the car that it sounded like that and yeah. went like that. So yeah. It kind of shocked a few people. They were kind of. Well, I think everybody's curious. Can we turn it on to see what yeah, it sounds we can. like? Yeah. Well, why don't we do that? Okay. Was absolutely brilliant. They didn't like that without blowing dust. I know, we got away with it. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Glenn. Okay. Thank you. Get your rag out when you do that next time. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, can see, I can see why they. <laughs> <laughs>